Hey, welcome back to California Gardener, now gardening on the West Coast. I just wanted to do a quick video on summer pruning your plum trees because there isn't much about summer pruning fruit trees and because uh, usually it's avoided. That's where the plants are rapidly growing. But I do do some pruning in the summer and I haven't noticed my trees take any uh, injury from it. The key is doing it during a dry time. So you see, I cut off this lower branch. It was down too low. It didn't have any fruit on it. I wanted to uh, open the tree up a bit. So I cut off, there was a lower branch here, down low, blocking this flower. So I just chopped it off here. But then another reasons for doing some summer pruning, these long new shoots, uh, they can really grow and suck a lot of energy out of your tree. Uh, they, you can clip off the tips to stop them from growing and then it, you won't get these super long shoots that the tree puts all this energy into that usually you prune off these, um, these suckers anyways, or you shorten them up so the tree gets more structure and branches out, uh, later on. So I'll show you this. So sometimes you get, you get these, you know, wispy tips and I, I usually would cut this even shorter here. But these things can grow like, you know, three, four feet out by the end of the summer. So just, just let it grow, you know, 10, 12 inches and snip off the tip. Another reason I do it, as you can see right here, I have an issue on this tree and I'm going to have to spray it with some dishwater. Aphids. You see this curling of these new shoot leaves. So a good way to thin out your aphid population on the tree is just to trim off all the new shoots. As you can see, most of the aphids are in those freshest, newest shoots. So you can either like smack, go around to all the leaves and just smash them with your thumb like this, roll the leaf, which doesn't hurt the tree, but it does remove the aphids, but they, they just keep coming back. So you gotta spray it with soap or cut the leaves off. You know, you just roll them like that and you see just smash all the aphids. It's pretty satisfying, especially when they're destroying your tree. So that's another good reason to get rid of diseased parts of the plant, especially in the summer when the tree is literally hanging on for dear life when there's pests around. These aphids almost nearly killed one of my plum trees last summer and uh, they were just so aggressive last year. So trimming off the affected wood can help out, okay? Another reason, another disease that I've been having on my tr plum trees here, every year I have a spot or two, this stuff, okay, black knot. Look at this. It's, you'll see it, it can grow on many types of trees, okay? It's super infectious. It grows super fast. So if you don't address it right away, it'll spread around your tree and you'll have to end up cutting off a whole bunch. And it's really sad when the tree's fruiting because look, I lost one, two, I think there was a few more plums on this one, three, four plums on that branch. And you see, that's a pretty good size. That's already a fruiting branch. It's got some nice wood on it already. So it had some decent fruiting going on, but I had to cut off, okay? And when you cut these off, you have to cut far enough away, usually like six to nine inches away. This is only about four and a half, five inches away, but it's because I run into closer to the main tree. So that's as long, you wanna cut it off as far as you can as possible because sometimes this can be actually growing under the bark. And I've had it happen where I cut it off too close and it recurs in your wound. So here's another one. So see, I cut this one off further because I had longer room. So that one's about six to seven inches away from the, from the uh, maybe six inches away from the uh, black knot. Of course, I lost a couple more plums there again. And a nice, a nice big, long, solid fruiting branch on this young tree here, right? Like it doesn't have the biggest branches. So that, that, that branch took a couple of years to make, but... This crazy black knot, just got to keep cutting it off. Every year I cut it off and I got less and less 
only two spots this year and on the other tree I cut off I think one spot so not too bad hopefully we can get a hold of it now the key is do the pruning when it's a dry time so you you cut through the pruning area the wounds he dry up and heal over fast so that you don't get disease if you you cut when it's going to be rainy like I know there's some hot days four or five hot days coming up we just got through some rain so I cut it now because then those scars will heal up if you cut it when it's wet they'll stay wet and they're more likely susceptible to get disease so don't do that okay and then the last final reminder is your shears okay so you gotta use a good sharp pair of shears to cut off all this stuff and when you're cutting off diseased wood or really any pruning that you're worried about your trees this is what i do this is just uh bleach and water between every cut dip it and make your cut i make the cut with the wet blade so it kind of uh it will add bleach water to that wound and hopefully kill any fungal, parasitic, or bacterial type infection that might come upon the tree from that wound, especially when you're cutting off or through bark that might be affected with black knot. Always make those cuts last. So these were the last two cuts I made and I made sure I rinsed off these heavily duty, or heavy duty in the bleach water before. And uh, to make this solution, I filled this container about half up with water and then you know it's probably about 20% bleach it's pretty 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 heavy duty bleach concentration it won't really hurt the tree systemically it might injure the tree just at the wound site it'll burn it a little bit but that's kind of what you want you want that area to dry out and uh, the tree will be fine just fine okay so cut off your diseased wood in the summer don't wait till the tree is dormant to do it don't wait for these diseases to get worse. You need to get rid of them and address them as soon as you see them. I've watched this black knot grow from day to day uh, on trees before I knew much about it. And it's shocking how fast this stuff can spread and grow uh, sometimes. So get a hold of it. And then once you've cut off all of this diseased wood, don't put it in your compost, okay? Don't put it in your yard, lay it around, throw it either in the fire burn it or put it in your uh, garbage or your green waste to get taken away from your pro property you want to get rid of it okay don't leave it lying around or by your trees or in your compost okay so I hope that helps uh, you get a healthier looking uh, tree this summer this is an odd looking one because I've had to cut out some significant branches over the last couple years because of that black knot but it's better to have a nice healthy looking tree and a little bit oddly shaped as they grow bigger they'll fill in it sends in new shoots and it'll fill in the areas that are that were cut out but you want a healthy tree that's alive rather than one that's infested okay and let's take a look at this plum tree over here that almost died last summer it was seriously really close to biting the dust and it never made plums in the last five years since I planted it. Almost died last year and this one after pruning off all the dead wood came back pretty good this year. Looks really good and it actually has a lot of plums which are doing quite well. It was the first year it bloomed really heavily. These ones are scarred up a little bit. That's okay. But they are growing. We have plums growing all over the place. Check it out. Plums, plums, plums. So I'm really happy for a tree that almost died to have survived and is producing. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to show you a couple days ago I came by and rubbed the, the aphids off this leaf which was covered solid. And you can see the brown staining from those aphids, the guts that dried out. But you see there's more aphids already so I'm really going to have to come by. And you either have to rub the aphids and squish them again or you got to spray it with soap and and some guys gave me a tip spraying it with uh, dishwater diluted soap helps dissolve the um, aphids so that's what i'm going to do because it's hard to squish every aphid on your tree way easier to cover it look at that see i i, I did did treat this leaf <laughs> <laughs> Allergies, sorry. 
I did treat these leaves a few days ago by squishing all the aphids. You can see the brown staining. But look how fast they colonize again. I squished this leaf. You can see I had it cleaned right off and they come back. So I just squish them like that. I find if you smear the guts and it dries out in the leaf, they don't come back to that the same area. So that can help sometimes too. So I just smash them and leave them on the leaf and they seem to avoid that area of the leaf, but they do go to the areas that weren't um, affected by smashing the, the aphids. Okay, let's, uh, I'll spray these ones with that soapy dish water and see if it works. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. And uh, thanks for watching. As always, leave your comments below. Hopefully this helps and thanks for following along with my gardening adventures and trying to make your garden a little better place as well. See you later.